Sí. Court does call the case of People versus Julian Carey. Good afternoon, Your Honor. See you again, Michael Atlanta. President Court and sitting in my All right. We're here on the motion, your motion for discovery to compel discovery. Yes, Your Honor. Should I begin? Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. I moved for discovery of potentially exculpatory material under MCR 6.201. Um, I made that request in July. Um, the prosecution had 21 days to comply and did not provide anything or any response until very recently. Um, last night, I received his response to my motion. And I filed a reply today, Your Honor. I'm not sure if you had a chance to. I read everything, counsel. So I know I do. <laughs> so if you read everything, you, you then you know what I'm asking for. And I'm asking for. Um, discovery of communications between the alleged victim, who was a fellow by the name of Will Hathaway, the outgoing Scio Township supervisor, and, and communications between he and members of the prosecution team, which um, include officers- How do I know these exist? Sorry, how do you know? Well, I, I believe they exist. I know for a fact that, that there are emails after the discovery was produced to me between the key detective in this case, is Detective Parvis. He's a quote unquote computer expert in the case. And well, he's not quote unquote a computer expert. He's extremely skilled in what he does. I'm sorry, so I didn't mean go to ahead. Computer, but he's, I don't know what, what his title is. I was just saying computer expert. But he's he, he has been having communications with Will Hathaway, who's the complaining victim. And also with members of the IT department of Sio Township. There have been emails, there's written communications between witnesses and- How do, uh, how do you know that? Because uh, I, I learned that from my client because Mr. Hathaway was talking about emailing with this gentleman. I believe they exist and, he, and, and Detective Parvis also came to the township and met with Mr. Hathaway trying to follow up on, on the inf information that we provided to the prosecutor showing why this case is, is completely um, a non-case, that there was no crime that occurred in this case. Not even a crime, let alone my client committing a crime. There wasn't a crime. A, uh, two old, an old email and an old beating request were sent when my client oh, clicked on I've, I've read that, counsel. I'm just trying to figure out how I know these things exist. You don't. You don't, Your Honor. You don't know until you look. And, and when I asked the prosecutor for this information, he said, on information and belief, I don't think they exist. That is not the proper response from the prosecutor, Your Honor, and you know that. The prosecutor's response should be, I checked with the, with the sheriff's department, or I looked at these, these materials, or they don't exist. All I got was- Well, what information and belief? Why You may not like the response, but the response is his information would have had to come from somewhere. So you're talking what- words he was using as opposed to anything else no i don't think so respect well i do okay well do you understand what i'm asking, for? I'm asking not for really because i don't know what documents you're saying exist that the prosecutor hasn't turned over okay i'm saying that there are emails for sure between detective parvis and will hathaway he's a complaining victim and i would ask for those emails to start, but I would ask for any written communications between any witnesses and and the sheriff's department and the prosecutor's uh, office. Okay, so the only way you know that there are emails between Mr. Hathaway and Detective Parvis are because Mr. Hathaway yeah. said if so. I have a moment, I can, I can tell you exactly. Can you give me one second? Sure. So how do we know? 
Did you leave oh, okay. for help. Oh. So, Your Honor, the way we know that they exist is because um, Will Hathaway forwarded those emails that he was having with the detective to another member of, of Sio Township, employee. another employee. That's how I know. So, where's that employee? You asked me for testimony from a witness? I asked you a question. Where is where is the employee that says they got the emails? Well, they're not at work now. They're it's past four o'clock, and we didn't know we needed to have them here. So, so this employee received. I'm presuming on their personal email or on the Sio Township email? Sio Township, Your Honor. So my question becomes, why would your client, if they exist, not have access to those through their IT department? She's not, my client has not been able to get access to that. And she has, I don't think she's requested that. Well, oh, counsel, do you have your, I mean, have you tried to get them? Have I tried to get them? I, me? Yeah. I've, I've done a FOIA for, for communications at the, uh, the township, but this is stuff that happened more recently when I did the FOIA. And it's, Your Honor, with all due respect, this is exactly what the prosecutor ha should be doing, is finding out are there communications be between my witnesses and and my police officers that are that are so with all due respect, don't you will do is you will answer my question. I'll answer Have question. you attempted to try to get them? No. I mean, I did by filing this motion. How, how are there how else am I gonna get discovery, Your Honor? I, I guess I'm confused by your question. Have I attempted I shouldn't to be confused by my question? Look, the prosecutor is not required to do what is really part of defense's job. Certainly, they must supply evidence that they have and comply with any reasonable requests. But you come here to me today, and I don't know that these things that you're requesting, whether they exist or not. And the only way that you know that they exist is because somebody has said that these were sent to somebody at Sio Township and that it's between Detective Parvis, presumably, and Sio Township. So my question is on that end, why don't, if they exist, when when did this happen? You're saying it's recent, but when? I can give you a date. Within the last two weeks. Uh, but it's not just that, Judge. If I may. I think I'm, I'm still arguing. I don't... No, I'm, I'm just trying to clear up the point here. No, 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 no. We, we don't do it that way here. Thank you. Just for a bit of context, Your Honor, if, if I may, Mr. Bogota provided me with some lot of information from a some ex, some computer person they had retained. And it had to do with a meeting uh, invite that went out around the same time that this email went out. That information was emailed to me and I don't know because I'm not a computer expert what it is that this information entails. I forwarded that information to Detective Parvez and, and I've spoken with Detective Parvez. He's attempting to uh, I believe the term is the header information that is retained on the servers at Sile Township. He's basically trying to vet that information, Your Honor. And so that has happened in the last few weeks. And, and perhaps in attempting to vet that information, Detective Parvez has been communicating with Sile Township. I have no reason, I have no specific knowledge of that. I haven't been provided anything, but it wouldn't shock me that Detective Parvez is following up because I asked him to follow up. He told me that at some point he's going to provide a report to me. I don't have any sort of report and I don't have any update for the court 
I'm only saying that in as much as I am aware that Detective Parvez has been communicating with the IT department at Silo Township over the last couple of weeks in response to information provided to me. Okay, well, that's a big piece that's left out. So you provided something to the prosecutor's office yes. that your expert provided to you. Yes. And then from that, the prosecutor's office then sends that information to try to figure it out. So how do I get to there? And so that hasn't been completed yet. I, I have not had an update or any reports. My understanding is the IT individual from South Township, the, the primary person has been is out on some sort of leave. And the other information was that obviously with an election forthcoming, the, the current IT person has a lot going on. So there's a delay, I think, in getting that raw data to Detective Parvez so that he can you know, validate whether this is or is not true based on the defense act. So, I mean, is there anything in that that's not true? No, no, no. So why am I here if you, geez, okay. if you gave them information and they're trying to unlock that information that you've given them. Why am I here on a motion to compel that information where it's not been done yet? Because that's not what I'm, I'm not asking for a follow up report. I'm asking for communications, Your Honor, and not just with, with Detective Parvis and the IT person, but most importantly between Will Hathaway and members of. of you know, yeah, but that. Re doesn't that come from a, isn't that the subject matter of the meeting invite or am I reading that wrong? What is the subject? The, me the meeting invite was for a meeting that happened 11 months or, or longer before. So it was an old meeting. That's why I say that this case was just essentially an IT issue. It had nothing to do with any individual action, or anything. And that's why this case is in this courtroom before you on this, on this matter, because there is no evidence. But, and that's why I wanted to, to spend some time talking about the case to show you that the principal witness is Will Hathaway. He is a political rival of my client. My client was running for the position that he now holds for the, the time being supervisor of Sio Township. And he is a long time political rival. So he's the one pushing this prosecution, Your Honor. He's the victim. He went to the sheriff and he's pushing this. So all of his communications with, with the prosecutor's office and with the sheriff, I believe I'm entitled to. And at the very least, I'm entitled to the court to make an in-camera determination as to whether there's anything exculpatory if they exist. If they exist. I know, I know. This whole thing could be, be solved if, if the prosecutor had said in his response, I asked, and there aren't any. I asked the, the sheriff, and there aren't any emails. There aren't any texts. That's all he has to do, but he didn't say that. He said... On information and belief, I don't know about it. And that's just not enough. That's not enough. So you wanting to use specific words? Well, I mean, the Supreme Court said that he has a duty to investigate material within the possession of the police. And he's telling me that he doesn't think there is any, but he doesn't say that he even checked. Okay. So, so let's uh, presume this counts. You make the request. Mr. Childers goes to the police department. Police department says, we don't have any. He then has to respond to you. He doesn't know that because he can't say they absolutely don't. He can only tell you what he's been told. So if that's all that he can say, he would have to say on information and belief, based upon, which is really going to be based upon conversations he's having, it, I don't have anything. Understood. And I've been on that side, and all I would say is, look, I, I asked, and they don't have it. Okay? And maybe he did ask. I'd, lo I'd you'd love to hear him say that he asked. But what I've heard from him, and I met with the prosecutor, Your Honor, is I heard from him that Will Hathaway 
made a contradictory statement to him telling the prosecutor that he himself did not write the email that was sent, the untimely email. I, he had said counsel, to other I can't, that he did write. I can't I get into case. evidence on the case. I, you're asking me, I mean, you keep throwing this stuff out there. I don't know if that's the evidence or it's not the evidence. I'm here on your motion, which is quite frankly improper in the way that you drafted this motion. How so? But because you, you lay out all of these things that, and quite frankly, counsel, made certain accusations against people in some conspiratorial sense that turned out not to be true. For example, you specifically stated that Patricia Reiser authorized the complaint. I went to the complaint. I looked at the complaint. She did not. And then that was before I got the response from the people because I didn't know for sure. I didn't say but, that. I said that she worked there and that was her job and that's factually accurate. And it, No, it, then you misled the court because you made it seem as one's reading it as though she's the one that's authorizing it. Don't tell me, counsel, what my impression of it was. Okay. And I think you intentionally tried to mislead me. I'm going to let you know that. I did not. Because that didn't happen. That's good. I'm glad it didn't. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. But it also shouldn't happen. You know what? You better sit down. Because you're going to learn real quick how to address this court. I don't play that way. I'm going to take a recess. You check yourself, and then I'll come back. Courts in recess. All right.
All right. The district court is now back in session. I'm going to jump to the exciting. You may be seated. Council, you, you've indicated emails between Hathaway and Parvis. What else are you looking for? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and, and let me just apologize to the court. I know you, you took a recess, and I want to say I'm sorry. I did not mean to disrespect the court in any way. I apologize if my, my arguments came across that way. I would say it's probably due to my, my extreme belief that my client is absolutely innocent. I apologize for my zealousness. Uh, making me feel that I was being disrespectful. Good. I apologize. Um, other things besides that, Your Honor, the communication between Will Hathaway himself and um, members of the prosecution team, including Parvez and um, De uh, Deputy Phillips, who's the, the officer in charge of the case. So that's what I'm asking for, uh, communications. And, and I don't need to say anything more. I'll rely on my brief. Well, no, I do have a question. How do I know these exist? Uh, you don't. You don't. I only know what I've heard and what I've reported to the court. And what I was asking is for the prosecutor just to check. And maybe I misread his response. Maybe he was saying information belief means he checked. I just want to know if he looked and if there's nothing. Then Did I'll... you ask? Um, I asked for him and he said he wouldn't provide them. So they weren't, they weren't discoverable. During Mr. Our... Childers? Yeah, and the problem, this is now like the third time in this hearing, as well as multiple instances in the pleadings, the defense is misrepresenting, misrepresenting statements that I've made to the point where I don't feel comfortable speaking with the attorney absent being on the record or in writing. We've had phone conversations and turns and somehow the subject of those phone conversations shows up in the pleadings inconsistent with what was actually said. There was a statement in the pleadings that uh, that the fact that the defendant passes private polygraph, I should act upon it, even though I specifically told the defense attorney that the only way we would do anything on the case is if she passed the police polygraph, because as this court well knows, that standard procedure. That offer still stands and Ms. Carrie wants to avail herself to a police polygraph. Not only would I welcome that, I think that a result on that could be highly dispositive in a case like this. It's my understanding that she's not willing to do that. That's her right. I don't, that's fine. As far as my communication with respect to emails, the, the statement that I was responding to that I would not turn over would be internal emails in our office among the attorneys, because clearly that's work product and that would not be turned over. But in fact, in that conversation, what I told defense counsel was, candidly, there are no emails. I've never emailed with Mr. Hathaway. If I had, it wouldn't necessarily be discoverable. It could easily be work product, but those emails don't exist. I've never emailed with him. I did communicate with Chris Reiser in our office. Obviously, I wouldn't communicate with John Reiser, and to insinuate others is, is frankly, when I read the thing, I had a thought to communicate with the, with the bar regarding the ethics of the pleadings and the communication in this case. I am not aware of any email correspondence between Detective Parvez and Will Hathaway, and I'm not in possession of. Obviously, if there's a report that Detective Parvez produces, and that report insinuates or includes those emails, those will be turned over. If the report reads as if there was email correspondence between Detective Parvez and Mr. Hathaway, I will ask Detective Parvez, please attach those emails in your report, and I will tender them. The court is well aware of the work product that I do and the ethics that I hold and, the, and how in the fact that in this case, the allegations that this is some grand conspiracy is insane to me. It's truly insane. I've practiced in this court for a very long time and I've never had an attorney accuse me of what has happened in his pleadings and I take great offense to it. I will continue and I, as I always do to follow my constitutional obligations and the obligations in the, in the Michigan court rules with respect to discovery. But I can't create discovery where no discovery exists. I will respond to that by saying, number one, I did not do anything unethical in my in what I filed. And I agree well, that I should counsel, have no more conversation. Counsel, let me just say, when I read your motion, to compel discovery, and you were giving this 
background information. I'm not going to opine on whether or not it's ethical. I think you have made certain allegations against people that if I were to call you to task to say that that actually happened, I think you might be hard pressed to do so. Um, the very fact that people with the same last name exist in an office doesn't mean that they had anything to do with it. Um, in fact, typically, certainly as it would be between um, Patricia Reiser and John Reiser, um, I'll just say this, maybe what you're saying happened Maybe, but the ethics of these individuals, if one's going to question them, then you better bring it and not just try to float out that somebody did this or did that. Because, and I'll, I'll make it very clear, Miss Patricia Ryder, has practiced in front of me for years. No, no, for years. Um, her ethics are beyond reproach. The fact that I, I can tell you this and almost would bet my barker that if something came across her desk and it had to do with silent time, and she knows that her husband is involved in Silo Township, she'd have nothing to do with it. She would stop. It would go someplace else. She would forget about it and never have a conversation. That's who she is. That's how she's practiced. That is everything about her. So when I'm reading this council, I'm going to tell you, I have serious doubts when it starts that way. But things can happen. And that's why I went to the file before we got here to figure out who had it. She didn't have it. Her name's not on it. And I don't think it's fair to make accusations about people offices, how they operate, without being able to substantiate. You tell a story that somehow or another, somebody, I mean, after getting done reading this, here's what I've got to believe. I've got to believe somehow in Silo Township, there is somebody who went to the Sheriff's Department, made some complaint that the Sheriff's Department then without any basis whatsoever, then put together a report that they submitted to the prosecutor's office based upon their investigation, and that it didn't have, that there was no basis there to do anything, that then it got into the prosecutor's office, and the prosecutor's office then said, well, we don't see anything here, but we're going to make this happen. Wouldn't happen here. And that's really how your document reads. I, I go ahead. I was gonna say, I, I apologize that it reads that way. You have to, if you would just see it from my perspective, I'm coming into this case. I don't know Ms. Riser. I don't know any of the players. All I've is seen, and I see a woman who was part of essentially just an IT issue and she ends up getting charged. I've talked- But, but counsel, it makes no sense. and maybe it doesn't make any sense. Maybe somebody made a bad decision in terms of their discretionary call. That's wholly different from saying you shouldn't have done this to that there is this intentional 
thing to happen to charge your client. I, I'm having a hard time believing that. So while you may have absolute faith and belief in your client, which you should, that doesn't mean we create a conspiracy as to why something happened. Somebody may have made a bad call. I, okay. I 100% agree. I only wanted to give you the, the players and what the roles were. That's all I was trying to do it, where people were and why it seems fishy. This case seems fishy, Judge. And I want to know if there's any shenanigans. I want to know if there's shenanigans in emails or texts between witness Hathaway and the, and the sheriff. That's what I want to know. If they don't exist, then the prosecutor can just say they don't exist. I guess that's what he's saying. So I'll take, I guess I'll take his position as, unless he wants to, to change it, as being, I've checked with the sheriff and these exculpatory documents don't exist. If that's the case, fine. So be it. That's the record and I will say nothing more. And I appreciate the court's time today. And again, I did not mean to be disrespectful in any way. So, because I'm not going to go through this again. Because, no, listen to me. You know, counsel, sometimes sometimes I want to just take attorneys back and just have them understand that in the privilege to practice law in this state, you need to be respectful of the process and the people. Um, and you have to do it in a way that doesn't practice in a way that doesn't jeopardize your credit. And I think people don't do that. And sometimes they don't do it with just the words they use. You know, <laughs> Mr. Childers gives his response to your motion. I can tell you, I appreciate, I guess, Mr. Childers' discipline and how he responded, because I think if certain accusations had been made against me in my office, mine would have been a little bit more fiery than that. But that's just me. Do you have a copy of your reply? I sure do. Would you like to read May I approach? Oh. No, I've got a copy right here. Oh, oh, I've got a copy right here. I want you to just follow along with me. Absolutely, sure. In your reply, that is their 11th hour filing of its response to your motion to compel. Really? Yeah, it was filed last night or yesterday. I filed it weeks ago. What's the need to say that? I'm going to know exactly when it's filed. What's the purpose behind that, counsel, really? To say that somehow they were dilatorious and what they needed to do and just sort of threw that in? I mean, really, what's the purpose in that? Then, I guess I then guess go I to the next paragraph. Uh, can I just answer your question? Go uh, ahead, the if there is one. Why this was short and done in the last minute. Council, I know when everything comes in. So, and then you make the pejorative statement in the next paragraph, Council. That the people shrug off their constitutional responsibility to locate and produce potential Brady material. Yes. Did they really do that? Yes. My, my then, then counsel, why do we get to the point today after this hearing 
what have they shrugged off? List it to me. No. If you're gonna if you're gonna stick by that statement, list it to me. Yes. It's constitutional duty, you know. I'll quote. I know I know Brady upside down and backwards. Right. So you don't need to quote it to me. But he they shrugged it off because they said, I don't I don't know about anything. They didn't they didn't check. They didn't look. They didn't, they, they didn't become educated, as far as I know. Maybe they did. And I want I would like to know that. If that happened, then they didn't shrug it off. But right now it looks like they did. Looks like they shrugged it off. Even now? He's, Mr. Childress has still not said that he checked. He still has not said that he... You have got to be kidding me, counsel. Even now. But did he check for emails? Can I just ask him? Okay. But even now, counsel... You sat down. Mr. Childers gave his response about what he would do. You sat down and you said, okay. I then read something that you wrote and you're still maintaining that somehow or another, they're not abiding by the constitution in some way of jeopardizing your client's rights. I'm going to tell you, and I will assure you, counsel, in my court, your client's rights will be protected. And quite frankly, that is in regard to any attorney or whatever. Even if the attorney's not doing their job, I'm going to do my job and make sure her rights are protected. So you, but after we get done with all of that, you still are sitting here saying, that he's shrugging off his constitutional obligation, counsel. You asked, I thought your question was, why did I put it in there? Right now, if he's checking, and I don't, I'm not saying that. I do not still think that. that is that your question? I'm sorry. I, your question. I thought you were asking me why I wrote that. So. Yeah, well, I still am curious as to why you wrote it, because it's not true. I disagree with you. I'm sorry. You, show me where it's true. Agree. No, show me where it's true. If you want to disagree with, you know what, counsel? The way I work, if you're going to say it, you're going to be called upon to put up or shut up. Show me where it's not true. Now. The prosecutor did not educate himself as required for constitutional law by going to the, pro to the finding out if there were emails. I know there are emails. I know they exist. And for him to say they don't exist, it's not true. So there's emails. So I know that's not. He's not in possession of any emails. He doesn't know that they. Counsel, I've asked you what emails exist. Your emails or your knowledge of these emails what? supposedly come through basically three levels of hearsay, as I count. And so the, the thing is, when I ask you, show me what, tell me what you want. When was it? What are they not giving you? You you can't give me anything. Sure, I know I, I know what I know, and I explained how I knew it, and that's all I know. Okay, so I'm I'm asking though for I was asking for a general counsel. That's not the way I practice in my courtroom. Okay. If you come here, you better be ready to answer my questions and put forth what you're saying. I don't operate on speculation of something. If you're telling me that the people have something in their possession or have access to that may be exculpatory to your client, certainly, but even if it's inculpatory and they haven't given it to you, you need to lay that out to me on something other than speculation about whether or not something exists. That's the way I work. How would I know? How would I know if it exists? I don't know. Then you just can't make the accusation, counsel, that they're hiding something. I'm just asking. I wasn't saying they're hiding anything. I'm asking for the information. No, Sorry if your, I your, your whole motion is an accusation, counsel. I, didn't, I don't read it that way. I'm sorry. I, I, 
It is an accusation. No, it's an accusation that, that they shrugged off their constitutional duties to produce certain evidence that they don't have, and you don't know if they have it or not. I mean, I, I'm asking for it. I'm just trying to compel it. If, if you don't compel it, then I'm the one. Never what am I going to? What are we going to compel? I would ask for an order saying turn over any emails if they exist. They aren't sculptural. That's all. If they don't counsel, that is about as useful as turn over every unicorn in your possession. Because I don't know that they have either one. I mean, that's not a basis of a motion to compel, counsel. That's not how you practice. If you and and by the way, counsel, some of this you can FOIA, you can subpoena it. But that's but you also have to do your job. And if they're not turning over something and you truly believe that they're not turning over something, then fine, come before the court. But be prepared to tell me what they haven't given you. Don't give me some conspiracy story. Don't give me all of these things. Don't say because something's politically charged one way or another that that all of a sudden makes it something because that's not, that makes no sense to me. You tell me what you want if you think they're not giving you a direct answer to exactly what it is, then yeah, come here, I'll ask them. And they know I'm gonna ask them. And then you can go from there. But you can't just throw everything up in the air saying they're not doing something, when in fact, that's not true. As I, and, and, and here's the other part, counsel. The other part to this is, until Mr. Childers said so, because I, I didn't see it in any of the documents, this all starts from something you gave them. I mean, that's... So you give them something, they fulfill their duty and obligation to try to follow up on it. And while they're in the midst of doing that, you do this. Crazy. That makes no sense to me. Why wouldn't you just wait? Find out if there's a report. If there's references to communication, then certainly one might be able to get those communications. But I... You know, I'm not one that believes in a lot of conspiracy, but counsel, in as much as I want to believe, or you want to believe that the prosecutor's office is running around trying to figure out how in the heck can I get at Miss Carey? Why wouldn't I believe that mm -hmm. you're giving them that document from the expert? having them go on what may be a fishing expedition and then filing this motion is somehow and or another your attempt to try to make them look bad. Why, why wouldn't I think that that's the conspiracy you entered into? If you knew my reputation, like you apparently know Ms. Reiser, you would, you would know that I wasn't trying to pull it. Maybe then... I operate on the presumption that people are acting in good faith until they show me something different. And that's why I don't go there to think that it's some kind of setup. I think you just messed this one up, counsel. I think you messed it up. And I think what you need to do is you need to make sure to wait for that. see what it says. The court will give you the time to analyze it, look it through. If there's a reference to some communication, then there's something there that says that there that it happened. But I don't have anything now. What day is this set for? What do you have? Huh? 
Well, I have the motion and the probable cause. So it is today. So the motion to compel discovery is denied. Uh, Mr. Childers, please prepare an order to that effect. Okay. Submit it to the court. Um, as to the probable cause here, where do we need to go from here? I think we should probably set it for for another PCC and a probable cause hearing. How much time did you need? I mean, well, I kind of understood from Mr. Children that they are analyzing, still analyzing the motion. Now we need to say. <laughs> I don't think that's what he said. I think what he said is he's going to be analyzing information and they'll be looking at it all the time. So are you going to be handling the probable cause, or probable cause hearing? I will be handling the probable cause hearing. And whether or not it stays with me for exam is yet to be determined. Okay, thank you. How much time do you think we're going to need to, where we can maybe do something productive on the case? I would say, based on the correspondence, the, the conversation I had with Detective Parvez, and I think, like I said, part of an issue that he's had in getting information, IT information from Sio Township is the pending uh, election, um, which is obviously two weeks from, well, less than two weeks away. I would suggest perhaps um, late November or early December, because I don't think Detective Parvez is expecting anything until sometime after that. That's fine. Probable cause conference in this matter will be adjourned to November 26, 2024 at, is that, pardon? Those are at 9 a.m. At 9 a.m. 